Hey, good morning, Rams. Jim Tabor here talking to the class of 2023. Just want to go through part four of your summer reading, this True North. So we're up to pages 71 through 85. And in this part of the book, he's talking about spiritual consolation and how it helps us in our discernment process. So uh, he points out that the first thing you have to do is understand what spiritual consolation is. And he makes the point that it's when your soul becomes inflamed with the love of God. And he uses an example of like you look at a sunset and go, oh, that's beautiful. It makes you feel good. But then, you know, you extrapolate that to, oh, wow, well, God made the sun and God made the universe and God made me. And man, it's great. You know, and you just feel this connection to God. Uh, another example that would maybe feel closer to me would be, I remember holding my daughter for the first time and realizing how much I loved her and that extrapolated how much my parents loved me. And then it further extrapolated this idea that, oh, wow, God loves all of us even more than that. So it was one of these moments where I had a real intense spiritual consolation. Uh, his point with all this is that these spiritual consolations can help us discern God's will because uh, we only have these things um, when they deal with something that draws us to look towards heaven. And because at some times these can be emotional, he says there are times when tears come from this. And he's he's uh, referring to, you know, this is all St. Ignatius of Loyola's work, that um, times of consolation when we feel sorrow for sin, reflecting on the passion of Christ, or when we're doing service or praise of God, uh, these are all times where, the spiritual consolation may be accompanied with tears. And for this part of the book, he, he's focusing on this idea of, of service and praise to God as being really important in our discernment process and deciding you know, what the will of God is. Now, he also makes a point that not all, in consol not all consolation involves these huge emotional moments. I think that's a mistake that many of us make, particularly when we're you know, initially moving into a more intense spiritual life, we're expecting that, you know, every gift from God is going to involve this huge outpouring of, of you know, dramatic emotional response. And that's, that's just not how it works. Uh, God uses lots of small methods of consolation to help point us towards heaven. And we have to be, become good at discerning and seeing these because they can serve as what he calls signposts to help us understand God's will. And so as you're discerning what you're doing, you may have a you know small moment of consolation as you're thinking about some issue you're trying to resolve or you're thinking about your vocation. And again, he's saying, oh, that, that, you know, that's a little indicator from God that yeah, you're, you're moving in the right direction. He also talks about how we have to have a proper understanding of joy and peace because these are aspects of consolation in the spiritual life. Now, he makes a critical point that joy and peace are not transitional feelings. So the happiness we feel when we do something is a transitional feeling and it's good. God wants us to be happy at times, but happiness comes and goes as we all know. Joy and peace though, are, are things that are consistent in our lives that you can even have joy and peace during the most difficult times because of you have this great faith in God and what he's asking you to do. So, when he points out that when you have these moments of joy and peace, that these are really strong indicators of God's will, you know, provided they're pointed towards heavenly things. So, again, if you're if you're thinking about your career and thinking about this career option brings you a lot of happiness and a lot of peace, then that's probably an indicator that that is something God is calling you to do. On the other hand, if you're thinking about a career and it brings you mainly concern <laughs> and distress, even though, you know, someone says, oh, you'd be really good at that. But deep in your heart, you know, that's not what you're something you'd want to do. Then that's an indication that, you know, you're not having joy and peace. So that's an indication from God that, no, that is not God's will for you. OK, the uh, next point he comes up is this. Uh, you know, when you have these consolations, they're great. And when you're discerning, you know, what God wants you to do, um, it's very important to have these consolations. But he, he also says you need to begin to prepare for desolation. Because as we spoke, uh, I don't know if it's the last session or session before, 
you know, the devil is not just going to stand by and, and let you make the decision and do God's will without a fight. He's going to step up and challenge you. And so as you experience these times of consolation during these periods of joy and peace, you need to prepare yourself for when the desolation is going to come. So and it's important because if you don't, then it's going to be very easy for you to give up your commitment to do God's will. And so an example he gives in the book is that, you know, somebody making a decision to go to a Catholic college, you know, that's further away from home um, and feels real good about that. But then, you know, these periods of desolation come in where it's, you know, calling up all these, you know, potential negative things that could happen. You know, you're going to be away from your family and friends. You know, people are going to forget you. Uh, you know, you're just doing this for your own glory, things like that. So by preparing yourself ahead of time for these, you know, potential challenges to your decisions, uh, you'll be more prepared to accept them and continue to live God's will. So that, that's kind of uh, his summary of consolation for this chapter. And then uh, his prayer challenge for the week, and I really like this, is to spend 30 minutes praying in the following areas. So just not in one, but three 30-minute periods. You know, the first one during Eucharistic adoration. So, you know, find a church and go in there and pray for 30 minutes. And then the second one, you know, to go out in nature and pray for 30 minutes. Um, and then the last one is to read the Passion Accounts in the Gospels. And uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola was very big on, you know, placing yourself within these passion accounts, you know, as, you know, a witness there, not just reading them, uh, you know, like a newspaper article, but actually, you know, delving into them yourselves. And so that's a prayer challenge he gave for this week. And then uh, it looks like spend a couple minutes looking at the reflection questions on page 85. So these questions are supposed to, you know, where you're going to write your prompt on. And you have a two to three hundred word reflection due on the first Friday of school. So uh, there's four questions here, and I just thought maybe I would, you know, kind of tell you what I would possibly write on if I was doing this assignment for myself. So number one is, have you ever experienced consolation as Saint Ignatius defines it? Uh, an example I could give from that is um, when my wife first got ill. I, I was just completely overwhelmed. And I remember she was in the hospital in Boston. And uh, I remember, and my daughter was, she's at that point, she was three years old. And I remember going into the chapel there and just, just feeling completely overwhelmed and just basically saying, God, I can't do this. And feeling this intense wave of peace come over me you know, basically saying, you know, making me like, okay, you know, yeah, God's here with me. God has my back. Um, you know, I'm going to be able to get through this. So that was a, you know, that was an intense period of consolation I had during a, a real trial that was uh, extremely helpful to me. Uh, number two is, are you an emotionally expressive person or emotionally reserved person? What challenges to understanding consolation through tears might you have based on your disposition? So, um, I would say that I'm kind of an emotionally reserved person and I do have had moments of consolation where I have weeped and it was just kind of this uh, strange experience for me and I wasn't ready for that. So, you know, recognizing now that this is a normal part of the consolation process spiritually, that would have been helpful for me to know at the time instead of thinking like I was having some big emotional breakdown. I wasn't. It was a total natural thing. And as I've grown in the spiritual life, I've found that um, I am prone to tears during some of these emotional consolation times. And, and now it doesn't bother me at all. I just kind of accept it and go with it. Uh, three, when was the last time you experienced joy and peace? Uh, the last time I could say that would just be last week at the Steubenville conference. So that was, again, you know, just whatever, four days of spiritually focused time, all of us trying to do the will of God. And it was just, yeah, it was an intense, an intense time of joy and peace, just seeing everybody, you know, kind of aligned and worshiping God. So um, maybe something that might be more relatable to some of you was when I was up at seminary, you know, the year before I came back, um, I, 
why I was happy up there, I can honestly say that I didn't experience a lot of joy and peace um, because I kept having this uh, reoccurring thought that I should be at Regis instead of at the seminary, you know, doing God's will at Regis instead of the seminary. And so as I struggled through that through the year, again, even though I was happy and I was enjoying my time there, um, I remember when I had the opportunity came to come back to Regis and I accepted it. I just remember going, oh, it was just like a huge weight was lifted off my shoulder. And I felt like, oh, this is, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is where I'm supposed to be. And so really just really grateful that that all happened. So, um, yeah. So anyway, that's two times I experienced joy and peace. One was at the Steubenville Conference recently and then in a big discernment decision when I was at seminary and decided to come back to Regis. Uh, number four, is there a big decision you need to make right now? If so, spend some time writing about the circumstances, your fears, hopes, and then offer to God in prayer. So I know some of you are starting to make decisions or think about decisions about college and careers. So that's what I would kind of expect you to be, you know, thinking about or maybe relationships, you know, for the future. Um, and I will share a decision that I, I am thinking a big decision right now is, is the next step we need to take within the spiritual life program at, at Regis, you know, to support the students in their growth and their faith. And so um, um, there are some things we're, we're thinking about and praying about that, you know, we hope to maybe start rolling out next year that will help you guys maybe progress in your faith life in a more, a more personal and a more, you know, productive way than, than we're currently doing. So, um, if I was doing this, you know, myself, I would just pick one of these questions to write on. And hopefully that, you know, it's not just something you're doing for your assignment, but I would pick the one that's going to help you most in, you know, whatever discernment you're doing right now. So that's, uh, that's it. Um, looking forward to seeing you guys in a couple weeks. I'm finishing up a quarantine period for COVID exposure, which is the first time I had to do it since all this started. So, uh, Feel much better today and looking forward to going to see my granddaughter next week. And I'll share some pictures of me and her uh, in Connecticut uh, on the Instagram there. All right. Take care. God bless. Go Rams.